So a very good afternoon to folks joining us from MENA region and good evening to those from South Asia and Far East. I'm Amrita, Program Director at XCD. Extremely happy to connect with you and thank you for taking interest in the Digital Business Leadership Program offered by Cornell University. Appreciate your time to learn about this program, enroll for it, and think about what it might be like for you, your career, or for the network of people that you will connect with as part of this program. And today, we're extremely glad to have with us Devin Beginners, who is joining us from US. And before I hand it over to Devin, I would like to share a few thoughts. So we all probably understand the complexity uh, of the world that we're currently living in. We use the word VUCA, which is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. You might be taking interest in this program for multiple reasons. And it could be to stay ahead of this ambiguity and be better leaders, it could be to be better equipped to deal with the digital transformation that is taking place in your industry, or it could be to increase your digital dexterity to stay relevant in these ever-changing times. And to give you a better understanding on this, I'm calling upon Devin. Uh, Devin is a director at Cornell uh, and um, uh, has several years of experience in designing and delivering educational solutions for clients across the globe. So without any further ado, I hand over the mic to Devin. Devin, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Amruta. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to you know where you are, probably afternoon and evening. Uh, it is definitely morning here in the US. Um, um, and so uh, good morning or good afternoon to all of you. Um, as uh, Amruta said, Devin Biganis, uh, Director of Custom Live Corporate Programs within the integrated area of Cornell University, Cornell External Education, um, and have several or uh, I think it's 18, 19 years of designing these types of programs for um, global organizations that, as Amruta said, are grappling with what does VUCA leadership look like, right, in this digitally transformative world, right? It's a faster moving world. It's one that you have to blend both business acumen, leadership skills, digital awareness, many of these complicated issues um, that the world is facing and that you face as a leader. So um, thank you for your interest in this program. Um, Cornell University is thrilled to be partnering uh, on this cohort as well with XCD Learning um, in, in India and Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Um, to offer this program to help you contextualize that those challenges. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes giving you an overview of some of the ways that we've thought about designing this program, um, some of the mindsets that you probably might need to have in order to execute this program. And then we'll talk a bit about the structure of the program, some of the faculty and some of the modules that we thought about helping you to engage um, in this. And the first mindset is, as Amruta said, is helping you navigate the, the VUCA world. Um, that is a world where the, the world is growing increasingly complex. Um, oftentimes it's called sort of leading in the fog, right? If you think of what the world looks like, it's increasingly foggy um, because of digital disruption, new competitors, um, you know, sort of stalwart brands that are being disrupted and challenged. And, um, and so you, where you are in that organizational landscape really matters um, in terms of your ability to navigate the fog, to think strategically, to be able to act and drive uh, innovation, entrepreneurial spirit um, in what you do. So uh, the first mindset that I wanted to share with you um, is what we think about in terms of strategic tensions, right? So this is this is an idea that's been around um, coming from the, a lot of the Fonz Trump and our work, um, you know, a few years ago, around this notion of navigating strategic tensions or dilemmas or paradoxes, right? And increasingly in a digitally transformational world, our job as leaders is to navigate those tensions. And so what do we mean by attention, right? These are ideas that both are present at the same time. Um, this is not an or, do we want to do one thing or another? This is, do we want to do one thing and at the same time do the other one, right? So a classic example in a manufacturing environment, if that's where you're coming from as a leader, is the safety versus innovation or safety and innovation mindset, right? So on one hand, you want to be safe, right? You have to have safety guidelines, you have to have risk mitigations, you want to be safe. And at the same time, you want to be trying new things, taking risks, being innovative. Um, that is a clear tension that you as a leader are trying to navigate. Um, in a digitally transformational world or an increasingly digitally thinking world, um, these tensions become both broader but faster, right? So you have to navigate this, this, these sort of paradoxes or these tensions that your organization faces 
in an increasing uh, sort of speed, right? Um, so it's not just doing this, but you have to be able to do this and stay in that lane uh, more rapidly. Um, increasingly in a digital world, the other one I'll highlight is um, there's a sort of competitive collaborative, right? You're, com you're collaborating on one hand with new partners, particularly that might have digitally relevant skills, but they also might be competitors um, to you. Um, the other classic one that we face as leaders is on one hand, we have to deliver the results of today, right? We have stock prices, we have financial returns, we have comp you know, competition, we have metrics that we have to deliver for today. And at the same time, we have to be innovating and trying new things so that we can position the organization well for tomorrow, right? That is a classic tension. So as we're thinking about designing this program, it was really around these ideas of helping you navigate these tensions at speed, right? That was really one of the core um, ideas that we wanted to plant as what you would get out of this program, both because of the faculty, because of the content, because of your fellow participants in how you can digitally think about these strategic tensions and paradoxes, which are moving fast and furious these days um, in the increasing, as Amruta said, VUCA world. So part of why Cornell as a partner for this um, is Cornell Tech. So Cornell Tech is a, a, a ground a game changing venture for Cornell University that just celebrated its 10th uh, 10th anniversary its 10th birthday um, the actual physical campus of Cornell Tech is located on Roosevelt Island um, in New York City between Manhattan and Queens if you know your New York City geography but for us it's really more than a real estate play it's a relevancy play right the campus was founded um, through the mayor then mayor Michael Bloomberg at the time to create this venture um, in the heart of New York City but also to help really at the intersection of engineering, business, and law with technology as the hub. Now, that may sound very familiar to you in your own organization in terms of how you balance engineering and the technical challenges, the business fundamentals of strategy and finance and marketing, and law in terms of risk, compliance, increasingly, um, you know, many of you compete in, in uh, or operate in those worlds, with technology as that common connector, right? Um, and so Cornell Tech and some of the faculty that you'll engage with come from Cornell Tech directly, but Cornell Tech also is a horizontal across the entire university, right? So the business school, the medical school, the vet school, et cetera, all have sort of Cornell Tech or technology as a horizontal across the entire university. So we think that that is a key driver of why Cornell is a relevant university partner for this digital business program um, in helping you navigate that and think through the fog and think through the, the VUCA nature um, at speed, right? Um, helping you in, uh, embrace what they what we're calling here a builder mindset of understanding how to navigate um, this environment. So uh, we think Cornell Tech is a, an exciting venture for that. So the Cornell uh, with, with XCD Learning is a key partner for us. Um, the Digital Business Leadership Program um, is it's in its fourth cohort. So we've had previous experiences of iterating this like any new technology venture. You're, you, know, you do V1 and then you iterate over time and you iterate at speed. Um, it is Cornell University, for, for those of you who probably know the um, your, your history here, is a U.S. based but global university. Um, it's an Ivy League, uh, Ivy League University founded in 1865. Um, and so it offers that Ivy League, Ivy League experience while then delivered in a virtual environment, in a synchronous environment, in an asynchronous environment, so that you can get that experience without leaving India or the Middle East or Southeast Asia or wherever you're going to be um, you know, uh, connecting in from um, around what that looks like. So the primary delivery methodology are these 18 different live virtual sessions, right, that, are, that have, each have sort of pre-work to help you think about the, the, that, that module. They have the live session with a Cornell University faculty member and your, and your peers are connecting synchronously. And then there's follow-up and then you start getting to the next one. So that's sort of the sequencing and the cadencing of what this looks like um, to, to do that. You'll also have access to the eCornell on-demand learning library. These are on-demand asynchronous modules that are created by Cornell University faculty members that are in sort of 30 minute, 45 minute asynchronous lessons, right? And the hope is that you're blending these two work streams, right? So at, while you're going through these live virtual sessions, if you want to double click on a, a critical thinking component or an influencing skill or a, you know, digital transformation skill, you can take the on-demand library uh, module in that um, to help you sort of further that learning. Um, and that's really what we're learning a lot of in doing these, particularly over the last two years, is you have to think of these as learning journeys, not just events, right? And so we're progressing you from where you are now to where you wanna go 
through these different um, methodologies that are all sort of leveraging uh, the Cornell faculty thought leadership and, and also the technology resources um, that exist here. There will also be a capstone project. There'll be an assessment to sort of as a data point from a self-awareness standpoint. Um, there's gamification, there's networking. And at the end of all this, you will receive a Cornell certificate of completion um, in the digital business leadership program that you can use in your own career development uh, on social media, et cetera. So um, that's sort of a, a broad overview of how do we think about the, the, the what. Um, the why, if you think of the, the Simon Sinek sort of progression of why, how, what, um, is the why is the world is increasingly changing more rapidly. The, the how is through this methodology. And then the what is actually, again, sort of through how you're going to do this, right? Um, and we hope that this kicks back to your why of you want to be a more relevant, faster moving, strategic thinker, strategic leader, entrepreneurial mindset, uh, focused leader in this increasingly changing digital business leadership um, environment. So that's sort of the, the why, the how, and the what. Um, as you think about the, the the program session, similar to sort of different ways of helping you understand sort of the the what um, is the model that we operate in and how we group these different content modules. Um, we we apply it through first is your ability to think differently to frame the challenges. I we led this conversation around sort of how you're how you're helping balance strategic tensions or dilemmas. So your ability to think differently is the part, first key. And then it's a, once I've got these ideas framed, my, then my ability to apply content, to apply ideas, um, to engage with these rapidly changing technologies and experiment in this environment and to sort of try out new ideas, to think about them differently and then apply them differently. Um, and then the last part is setting you up for success, right? Your ability to succeed in this environment. Um, so you're thinking differently, you're applying differently, and then we want you to be successful um, and succeed in driving change in your organization or in your environment. Um, and so we, we've grouped these different modules by think, apply, and succeed in order to help you do this. I, I won't go sort of module by module. Um, you can certainly do that as in any of the supporting materials that we've, that we've produced. But wanted to just walk you through at a high level, sort of a, a, a double click on these different sort of ideas, right? So your ability to think differently um, includes an understanding of what is different in a digital environment. You've probably heard a lot of the buzz around that things are faster, or things are more disrupted. But what does that really mean for different organizations, for different industries? And so the first module will really help you understand that and demystify some of these digital sort of engagements. That's sort of the second part of this is really an understanding of what is happening and what maybe isn't happening, but what really is happening in what you know digital is allowing companies to do, right? They're able to create and stand up new ventures much faster um, and things can be rapidly prototyped in a, you know, in, a, in, a, in a service environment or in a software environment or whatever industry you're in. And so the sort of deep, you know, understanding the environment, demystifying it, and then thinking about how does digital really change work, right? How does digital really focus on the, the, so all of the, the what, when, who, and why of different business models driven by digital, right? What does that really mean? And then we're going to spend some time in looking at what are the different business models that are can really be technology enabled, right? Um, what are the ones that are faster? Um, you know, what does that look like as you think about the different business models? And that's really a key part of this is digital has done many things, but it has really dramatically amplified and sped up how fast business models can be both thought through, implemented, and then take flight. Um, and so that's a key part of this program is the ability to think differently and apply and succeed in these business model worlds. So we're gonna spend some more time on these models. Um, and then we're gonna spend a little bit of time on once you've gotten the notion of um, sort of this, okay, what and, and what's actually changing, it's now your ability to market this, to be successful in uh, what this looks like from a digital marketing perspective, right? So we're gonna spend some time talking about different examples of organizations, both some you may know, some you may not know, that have been very successful in um, reaching through digital marketing channels and getting their message across to take flight again, sort of, um, you know, some of the classics around sort of, you know, Airbnb and others, but also some new ones that you might not be familiar with. And more importantly, think about what is it about those examples that you can think about in your own world to, to be a more successful marketer of your services, right? To get buy-in, to get new idea, um, to get funding, to grow your market share, et cetera. So then we're going to talk about how do you apply it, right? So we framed it. We've spent a bit of time sort of thinking about it. 
Now we're going to talk about how do you apply it, right? So how do you evaluate new opportunities, right? Part of one of those key tensions we talked about is risk versus innovation, right? So we're going to talk about a little bit on how do you hedge risk um, in this environment around digital opportunities, right? How do you evaluate digital opportunities um, using the business model canvas, using some of the tools we're going to talk about? Um, and then the other piece of this is, and a key part of digital is being a better database decision maker. So what do we mean by that is, as you think about your own decision processes, how do you incorporate data to make better decisions and make different decisions than you would make in a, in a non-digital world, right? Um, this often in, in sort of, the, in, in sort of uh, pop culture becomes, how do you money ball your business, right? If you think of the, the, the great, um, you know, great uh, Michael Lewis novel about my, Moneyball or the movie, they made different decisions about their baseball team because of the data they were incorporating, right? And so it was differently about how do you do database decision making differently? How do you apply that? Um, how do you overview the lens of de uh, design thinking um, around sort of making better customer decisions? So what is, what's the unmet need that we really need to focus on in doing this? And then we're going to talk a little bit about what is, there's a, a lot of buzz in the market um, around cryptocurrency or blockchain or fintech. So we're going to, and that's really affecting almost every industry. It's not just a financial service issue, um, though that may be one of the core areas that it affects, but your ability to be, to understand and anticipate what opportunities could come from the blockchain or fintech or digital payment models is affecting everything from e-commerce to retail to healthcare to many different industries that may come from this in terms of what are these different sort of tr major trends in digital meaning for your ability to navigate that as a, as a leader. But then of course, we want to make you, set you up for success, right? Um, and part of being a successful digital leader is the ability to experiment, right? If you think of the model of, I have an idea, I test it, I get some data around it, and then I refine it and do it again. Your ability to spin that wheel faster is a key part of organizational success and individual success. So we want to make sure you're, you're setting yourself up for execution um, excellence um, in these digital times to be to better understand how to have that experimentation mindset. Um, and then as and we'll end with helping you actually start maybe thinking about some of these experiments that you want to try in your own career or in your own job, right? That, that ability to innovate faster, right? There's the classic paradigm of organizations like Amazon and others, you know, run 10,000, 20,000 experiments, and then they get key ideas out of it compared to perhaps maybe uh, an older organization that is less agile that runs three or four experiments. Those are those become massive experiments as opposed to what Amazon's trying to do is constantly learn about what it's doing, right? So experimentation as a driver um, is a huge part of what this looks like. So for each of these 18 sessions, we, uh, the, we tend to get into a bit of a, a cadence as you think about it in terms of pre-work to do what you do before the live session and maybe building on the following the previous session. The, the session itself is about a two hour virtual session. Um, and then we'll do the, the follow-up after that in terms of what you might continue doing in your learning. So as you think about the sort of the sequencing you'll get in, um, where you'll be engaging with Cornell University faculty, um, and then having sort of both pre-work to do and follow-up work to do as you continue the rigor of this program um, in taking that forward. You can see some of the faculty uh, that, that are going to be your guides for this. Um, Alan Philipwitz, who's the faculty director for this program. Is a faculty at the at Cornell S. E. Johnson College of Business. You see faculty in here from Cornell Tech, from other areas of that are expertise in this, both speaking the language of both digital and entrepreneurship, as well as uh, you know business and leadership. Right. So helping you navigate this, and these are faculty that you will certainly get to know much better during their virtual sessions over the course of the of the program. Part of the, some of the benefits that you get from this are the, the network of people um, that you can engage with, of course, the faculty expertise coming from different industries and bringing that to you. And then at the end of this, um, in addition to the access to the on-demand library, at the end of this, you'll get a certificate from Cornell University that you can use as a demonstration to the market and to your colleagues of the sort of the work you've done, right, um, in, in doing that. Um, and so taking that forward, You've also got some capstone projects that you're gonna work through about giving you sort of ventures that you can constantly come back to and apply. Um, and I know we've only got a few more minutes left before we wanna open it up for questions, um, but I, I'm moving through for, for this. I'll just spend maybe one or two minutes on, um, as I mentioned, this is the fourth cohort uh, that we're moving into of, of the DBLP program. 
You see some of the world's leading companies um, have sent participants through this, um, a broad group of titles at a very senior leadership level um, that are understanding what does that look like at a senior leadership level in understanding the impact of technology in driving every business. I mean, on the left, you see, you know, some of the top organizations in finance, in healthcare, in professional services, in, in other industries that you can see there in technology as well um, that are moving, that have sent participants through this. Um, some and I'll, a lot of this can be available to you as a follow up um, in terms of the, as you can see, sort of the sweet spot that we've found. Um, while, of course, diversity of thought is important, the largest number of people have about 16 to 20 years of experience. So, pretty senior leadership group um, that has gone through this, as you can see, the different industries and the different areas that they come from. Um, some of the testimonials that people gave um, around the experience, the interactions with faculty. Um, the cohort um, based experience at, at pretty senior le leadership levels um, that have gone through this this program. And then obviously we're trying to sort of take our own messaging here as well around how do you gamify this right, how do you use new technologies and, and you know obviously smart devices to help this blended learning journey um, really take flight as you connect with your peers as you track your own progression. Um, as you gamify learning, that's certainly something we want you to be able to see your see your 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 progression towards this program uh, take taking shape. Um, and then at the end of it, you will get a Cornell certificate um, that you, as I said, sort of can can use for your own kind of continued development um, as you think about your career progression as well. Um, and I'll probably maybe pivot on this slide to Amruta. Um, I know I went through that quite fast, and forgive me uh, for non-native English speakers. I do talk quite fast. But I'm thrilled to be partnering. It's a, we think it's a great experience for you to just understand this fog or this these tensions that you're having to navigate um, in what you may face as a leader. So Amruta, I'll turn it over to you if you want to walk through any of this. And then obviously, if there's any questions and answers from participants that we want to answer. Sure. So we have some questions. But before that, just want to emphasize that the program start date is in November, but the application deadline is 27th August. So please feel free to reach out to our outreach team in case you happen to have any questions and please do, uh, uh, please do complete your registration before the given deadline. Um, so Devin, we have a few questions and uh, let me just put up the first question to you. So Mukesh asks, um, do my job prospects get better with this program? We, we certainly hope they do. Um, and we think the, the reasons they will is both your, your increased capabilities, right? Your ability to be a better strategic thinker and operator. We hope your pro job prospects will get better, um, both internal to your company. Also, you will be noticed more, um, you know, as you, as you grow as a thought leader in, in navigating this business, the Cornell certificate could also perhaps help your ability to market this program to your, you know, both internal, you know, job progression, as well as the, the market externally. Um, so we certainly, we believe very strongly as Cornell, and I know XED does as well, in that education drives progress, right? Both as a society, but also as individuals. Um, and so we certainly hope that while we can't guarantee you'll be promoted, Mukesh, um, that this certainly would help you um, in your career transition and your career progression. Sure, and, and just to add to it, Devin, you know, apart from that, um, this program also gives people a platform to build their network with people from different industries or regions. And then it is up to each one of them in terms of how they can extract value from someone who could be a potential client or a stakeholder or even a future employer for that matter. Great, great point, Amrita. Yes, ab absolutely. That's the case. The, the who you learn with is sometimes as important as what you're learning. Um, so absolutely, that's a key part. Great, great, great ad. Sure. Um, we have a question uh, from Clive which says, I don't have any experience in digital or tech domain, but am I eligible for this program? Absolutely, Clive. Uh, this is exactly the kind of program where you've been successful probably in, in sort of maybe a non-digital or non-tech uh, domain. Um, you probably need to understand what's coming or what's, what's, what's impacting your business or your career. Um, and so this is exactly why we've designed this program to both, you know, if you if you're don't have as much familiarity, some of these more technical based skill sessions will help you understand, you know, what, what do we mean by blockchain? What do we mean by digitally transformational? What do we mean by all these sort of perhaps buzzwords, concepts that you've heard about? And then if you're in the tech world, it also helps you understand the broader leadership and business environment. So we, the goal is that we're developing leaders that speak both language of tech and entrepreneurship and innovation, 
as well as leadership development and sort of business acumen, right? Those two different languages that leaders have to speak sort of interchangeably and fluently. Um, so certainly you coming from, uh, you know, perhaps, a, a, you know, a non-tech environment will certainly find a lot of value in this program and certainly you're eligible for it. Sure. And uh, Devin, if I may again add, you know, and you mentioned this earlier that for every session, there is some kind of a prep work, which is given prior to the session. I guess that is something that helps the participants reasonably align in terms of what the faculty is going to be teaching. So, so that is another point. De definitely. So, yep, yeah, that's that, that progression, that learning journey uh, will help you certainly be able to navigate this. Okay. Uh, our next question is, what is the key focus of the program? Is it skewed towards technology? It's, it is, technology is certainly everywhere around us, right? So it, when we, uh, you know, Fossil, we strategically sort of name the program in both environments that we want you to think about. So it's about digital and it's about business leadership, right? And so those two things have to go very much in hand because increasingly, everybody is facing digital disruption, right? Um, it, there's almost no industry in the world that is not being dramatically changed by technology, whether it's just everybody has an iPhone now, um, and so transportation is very differently, hospitality is very different, or there are massive changes in terms of the competitive uh, scope that you may face. Um, so it's about understanding your ability to understand, think, apply, succeed in digital and in technology. So you have to have some technical capabilities and what does that mean from a business leadership standpoint? Um, and so I think the, the name of the program really does sort of try to capture both of those lenses that we want you to look at um, with technology as a connector, right? What does technology mean for strategy, for marketing, for disruption, for leadership? But you have to understand and be able to, under, you know, if you're in a, you know, a, a client meeting and they ask you about, hey, what is, what is, what is block, what do you think blockchain is going to do for us within the healthcare space? We want you to be able to articulate that with an understanding of blockchain and with a, what does that mean for my client, right? So that's sort of the, it's, it's both of those lenses, uh, I would say, Fossil, as you think about this question um, with technology as a consistency across all of the modules. Thanks, Devin. And uh, we'll take the last question, which says, could you lay emphasis on peer learning component of this program? Yeah, so, so Nairon, great, great question. And certainly um, in this kind of open enrollment program, that you're in, you're in, you're engaging with from different companies from different industries. A lot of it is the network effect, right? The cohort effect. And so we've designed it so that you have interactions with the with all of your participants. But as as Amrutha has said, and I think it's a great point, is we're giving you access to this network, and then it's really up to you of how do you engage in addition to what we've already formally structured in networking with, with participants from, you know, setting up perhaps peer coaching sessions or reaching out to a fellow participant to say, would love to, you know, have coffee or tea with you um, virtually or in person, depending on where you're based. Um, and so you have access to this network and this peer learning environment um, that the faculty are going to help cultivate. But then certainly that's part of the, all the participants, previous DBLP cohorts, and I'm heard maybe you can talk to that as well, I know have leveraged this incredibly strongly. Um, in the networks that now it opens up, you're connected social media wise, as well as in, you know, uh, sort of directly. Um, and that's really a key part of these types of multi organization, multi industry programs in who you now are deeply more deeply connected to than you were before. Right. And, and Devin, you rightly mentioned about the peer coaching bit, uh, you know, just to emphasize for our, um, uh, for the ones viewing this is uh, to ensure there is continuous engagement for the for the six months duration program, we form these peer groups, you know, at a regular at a regular basis when you get to interact and bounce off ideas with each of the participants. So that by the end of six months, people have a strong networking community uh, within DBLP. So that is that is one thing. And the second thing is that these sessions are live. That means uh, the faculty speaking highly encourages people to talk and ask questions and bring their domain knowledge in the in the classroom. This is another component uh, which helps peer learning. So that was just one thing that I wanted to add. Yep. And I'm really bringing up a really great point about the part of the value of live sessions are they will be just in the moment, right? So if there is a very large technology disruption that happens throughout the program and pretty sure that that would happen over the course of six months in today's world, the faculty can bring that right into the program, right? So if there's a major merger or, you know, if a company has really announced something very exciting, 
they bring that right into the program, right? That's part of the power of doing live virtual sessions is, you know, you read the news this morning and it gets instantly brought into the session that day, right? As opposed to, you know, obviously in a pre-recorded asynchronous, you're more focusing it on tools or foundational content that is more evergreen as opposed to let's talk about what happened yesterday or this morning. Um, so Amrit, it's a great, it's a great call out for why 18 different live sessions can, can really have a lot of power in this environment. Sure. Uh, so I also realized that we are, we are at the end of our webinar, uh, but we have some questions, but uh, thanks for sharing those with us uh, to our viewers. Uh, our outreach team will be reaching out to you and we'll be addressing those questions. Uh, thanks so much for investing your time. Uh, and uh, thank you, Devin, uh, for spending your uh, Thursday morning with us. Uh, thank you so much. We'll connect back soon. Thank you. Great. Everyone. Thank you so much, Amruta and team. And looking, looking forward to the program. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Goodbye.